Hamilton, are you hearing me? I hope you're hearing me all down in Government Road, the top of Hamilton over in Church Ground, as far as Long Point, Jessops. I hope you are hearing me all over. This is the voice of the Concerned Citizens Movement. And we have come to Hamilton tonight, back in our old spot. We haven't been here for a little while but we wanted to be up here because the representative for charlestown said he wanted to come tonight to make the case his case for re-election and we know all of us know that it is a great case all of us know that when it comes to charlestown 
there is only one brand in town. Good night, everybody, wherever you are. If you're on your way here to Hamilton, take your time, but hurry up, come. Those of you who are watching on the live stream, of course, we are live on Facebook. We're also live on YouTube. And so we are reaching all over the world. The Concerned Citizens Movement, we are on the road again. We've been hearing a lot of talk about elections coming. Well, hopefully the elections will be on its way shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get too excited and we get into deep, we want to start the meeting off correctly. And that means we can all reverence ourselves where we are and we start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening asking for your guidance, your wisdom and support as we begin this meeting. Allow us to grow closer as a people, dear Lord, and to nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, O oh Lord. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome all of you who have joined us here in Hamilton this evening. I also want to welcome all of you who are on the live stream. And if you are on YouTube, call your friends and family and tell them that the Concerned Citizens Movement is live. And if you're on Facebook, share the live, please. Share the live. We want the live to build and build and build so that everybody, everybody on the island of Nevis and everybody who has an interest in Nevis, in the diaspora, that you can share in the message of the concerned citizens movement. Ladies and gentlemen, last night we had a wonderful town hall meeting in the village of Butler's. And this evening we have come to the heart of Hamilton. We have come to support our brother, the only brand in town, the Honorable Spencer Brand. The Honorable Spencer Brand has been your representative for the past five years. And he has done a remarkable job. If you look to my right, just up the hill in Hamilton, you will see the magnificent housing community that's going up. Your representative, Spencer Brand, he had to push for that real representation. And if you look just a little way down the road, to my left, you will see all the good work that has happened there at that water distribution facility. You will see all of the upgrades that have happened there. And you know, the work was done by people from right here in this community. So whenever the Concerned Citizens Movement is doing anything, we ensure that the work benefits the community as much as possible. And whenever the Honorable Spencer Brand is involved in anything, he ensures that the people of Nevis One are well represented. And that is the type of representation that I know that the people of Charlestown, Nevis One, you here in Hamilton and Government Road and all over Nevis One, want from your representative. And that is what you have been getting from the Honorable Spencer Brand and the Concerned Citizens Movement. And so we are asking you to stick and stay with the Concerned Citizens Movement. I spoke about, to my left, the water facility, the, the, the water tank and the 
the um, water treatment facility. Also in the back of, of you here, where I don't know how many of you in the area would go up there. We have the Hamilton Well. And that well was sunk some years ago. But the water that originally came from the well was not what we call WHO standard water coming directly from the well. And so it was an initiative that was championed by your representative, Spencer Brand, that got a water treatment system here. And so now that water from the Hamilton well is going into the water treatment system that is located right below us here, right in the same yard with all of the, the reservoirs and all of that. And that water now is going to feed the whole Charlestown area. The water was brought up to WHO standard and it is now being distributed. And all of the people of Charlestown are the beneficiaries of that good representation by the Honorable Spencer Brand. And I know as you travel around Charlestown, you see all of the different projects, infrastructure projects that are going on in the area. Every time you have to travel to town, you realize that there's some upgrade to some sort of road happening. All of that is a good representation by your representative, the Honorable Spencer Brand. Of course, as part of the CCM team. You see, this Concerned Citizens Movement Party is all about the people of Nevis. And we are coming before you to ask for a renewed mandate and an increased mandate in this election. And we are not just coming to you just like that. We are coming to you with a record of good performance. I think the Honorable Mark Brantley said it very well last night. And we all know he can speak very, very well. He said it in a very simple but a very powerful way last night. The Concerned Citizens Movement is coming to you and we are coming to run on our record of achievement. And on the other side, the NRP is coming to you. And what they're coming to you with? A lot of promises. And you know, he said promises, but I want to add something to that because they are coming to you with a lot of empty promises. So do not be fooled. You see, I have a lot of confidence. I have a lot of confidence in the electorate here on Nevis. I believe that the people of Nevis are very astute. Nevis is a small island. We all get around the island, whether we walk or we drive or whatever we do to get around the island. So we know and we understand what's going on. And the people have proven time and time again that they understand what's going on. So when the NRP comes to try to convince you, the good people of Nevis, to come their way with their set of empty promises, I'm asking you to do what I know you will do. And that is to reject, to reject the empty promises, the vacuous promises of the Nevis Reformation Party. And to stick with the concerned citizens movement, the party that all of us know is the only party in Nevis that continues to stand up for the people of Nevis.
You see, it is no secret at all. Everybody in Nevis know it. Even persons who are partial to the NRP, even persons who identify themselves as followers of the NRP, they know that when it comes to representation, when it comes to standing up for the people of Nevis, when it comes to having the best interests of the people of Nevis, there is only one party that the people of Nevis can depend on, and that is the concerned citizens' movement. Everybody knows that. Sometimes these NRP supporters, they would come up to me and they would tell me, boy, if only our party had a backbone like CCM. They know it. I know each and every one of you knows somebody who identifies themselves as a strong NRP. And I know most of you have had the same experience where these persons would come to you and tell you, "Why I wish NRP used to stand up for Nevis, how CCM do it. But you know, they won't do that. That is not the way. That is the way of the concerned citizens' movement. And so that is why, and so that is why I am asking you tonight to stick with the concerned citizens' movement. You, you all know what the other party, what their modus operandi is. You know how they operate. When they feel like they are at the point where elections come in and they want to get in, they start to come up with some sort of scheme. The latest thing we heard is that one of the candidates on the other side, one of the candidates on the other side was on a radio station over on St. Kitts. And, you know, the person went on the radio station and they said that they want people from St. Kitts to come over for the elections to be the returning officers. Why? Because the people from Nevis who are normally acting as the returning officers, that they are not fear. So they should remove the Nevisians and they should bring over people from St. Kitts. You understand? And then these are the same set of people who want to come to you, the people of Nevis, to say that they have your best interests at heart and that they want to represent you. You know, but this is not anything new for the NRP because we see them walking around and they say, hey, we have a new NRP. This is not the first time we heard about the new NRP. Every single time they want to get into government and it's a new election cycle, they come around and they say that it's the new NRP. You understand? They have new candidates, perhaps, but it's the same set of people you see walking behind them, you see walking and leading them all around. When you see them coming around, say they're coming to your house, it's null and void and them coming with them. You understand? So it's the same set of people with the same set of ideas who want to come back to do the same things that they were doing before. There's nothing new. You know, not a thing new. Not one thing new about them. Just today, somebody was telling me, why when an RP want to get into government, they will try to do anything. And when they want to hold on to government, they will try to do anything. They don't respect the will of the people. So when the people go to the polls and the people vote and the people say, we want CCM, they don't like it. And they try to do all kind of things to get around it. So the latest thing is that they're begging to the supervisor of elections to bring over people, bring over people, because the people them in Nevis not fear. And I say shame. I say shame on that individual who said that. 
and shame on the Nevis Reformation Party. They need to apologize to the people of Nevis. But I don't expect any apology because up to this minute, the NRP has never come out and apologized for disenfranchising people on the island of Nevis. What? They have never done that. What? What? You hear them coming with the same NRP name, knowing what NRP has done to the people of Nevis, but they have never come. They have never come to the people of Nevis to say, hey, I am sorry for what happened, and we disassociate ourselves from that. No, you have never heard them say it because they believe in the same thing. You understand? I remember when the then leader of the NRP went on the platform and said, if anybody come to Ayo and tell Ayo that the name of the list and that them are NRP. Now study them. You all remember? For those of you in the electorate who are younger, these things happened in Nevis around 2011 when a whole election in Nevis, you understand? They said that over in St. John's, that Hensley Daniel won by 14 votes with 14 spoiled ballots. And then sometime after that, shortly after that, the judge declared that election null and void. It's the only time that has happened in the history of Nevis because of all of the things that they did. And we cannot forget those things. We should never forget them. For those of you who are a little younger and you did not live through all of that, ask somebody who is a little bit older about it. You know, I remember going down into Cox and I saw persons who were born in Cox and lived there all the time. I saw them cry when they went into the polling station and their names had been removed. What? The people of Nevis should never forget those things. And NRP, they have not apologized for it. And these new set of NRP who are walking around with all the old set of NRP, they have never disassociated themselves from those actions. Look how easy we go Everything we do is a bad So I've said that to bring me to this. If they have not, disassociated themselves from those things and they're still walking around with the same set of people well nevis people ask yourselves what are they coming back to do ask yourself that question is the same set of things they're coming back to do so when you hear them coming to you and promising to take the stars out of the heaven and bring them down here for you. You should reject them as what they are, a set of empty promises. That is what they are coming to you with. When we in the Concerned Citizens Movement come to you, we come to you running on a record of good achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot forget that in 2020, all of us were living in good times here in Nevis. Things were going good. And then, bam, all of a sudden, a pandemic was thrusted upon us. The whole world went into a tailspin. And we're in other places, in other islands, close by our neighboring islands. We as civil servants were laid off and sent home. We didn't do that in Nevis. We as civil servants had to take 50% pay cut and 75% pay cut in other countries and in other islands. That did not happen here in Nevis. In Nevis, we maintained. We can't forget that. We can't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that when other places were not doing so well, so in some places, children did not go back to school until a year and a half after. What? Increase the
Yes, we're back. We just had the storm blow to here. To God be the glory. A little, a little volume on the mic. Uh, we just had some wind blow through here in, in Hamilton. Yes, and now we are having a little showers of blessings. But we came prepared because it's been raining all over Nevis recently. Showers of blessings. So we came prepared with the tent. Because we have a serious message to bring to the people of Nevis. And we're not going to be stopped from bringing that message, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to carry out our mandate to the people of Nevis. And we are certainly coming and asking you to consider the good works of the Concerned Citizens Movement, the good work that we have done over the past five years. Ladies and gentlemen, everything has not been all roses just before the little wind experience I was speaking about, COVID-19. And I said that in some of the other territories, it took students over a year and a half to return to the classroom. But in Nevis, when COVID came in, we pivoted immediately to online learning. And we stayed in online learning mode. But come September 2020, our students were back in the classroom. That's a government that continues to deliver in spite of all that was happening with COVID. We were managing here on Nevis. And that is because we had good leadership. And I think you, the people of Nevis, know it. And you appreciate it. And I have every confidence that when the election is called, that the people of Hamilton and the people of Charlestown and the people of Nevis will make the right choice and return the concerned citizens' movement. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my little quota for this evening. Of course, you know, my duty this evening is to be the chairperson. And so, I want to call on our first speaker for this evening. And Hamilton, we are, we are going big immediately with you. Our first speaker for this evening is none other than the Deputy Premier and the Deputy Leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. The Prince of Darkness walks behind me, behind me. But he will never, 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 never control me Today I live a life of sorrow Working for the joys of a bright tomorrow Thank you, DJ. You stopped much quicker than I thought. <laughs> but good night to the people of Hamilton. This year, people, good night to you. And I believe we are going far and wide because we are being carried on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and all of the platforms that are available to us. I want to say how happy I am to be here tonight. 
And Hamilton has always been a special place to come. Nevis on a whole, anywhere we go on Nevis, it is always a special place. And it's special to interact with the people of Nevis. I want to start tonight by saying to you that we are campaigning. Everyone has been asking, when is election? But election will come. An election will go, and when it's all said and done, the CCM party will win the next election. The CCM party will be victorious come the next election, and you know why? It is the only serious party that is contesting these upcoming elections. And our seriousness has been demonstrated time and time and time again, because every election except 2006, the CCM have prevailed in the last 30 years. And irrespective of what they may say on the other side, that CCM only know how to win election. That is what they say. But why do you contest the election? To lose? You can't contest elections to win. Because the people are looking for a winner. The people are looking for a party that will represent them well. And that is what the CCM has done. The people of Hamilton, we are here tonight to support the Honorable Spencer Brand. And he is coming back to you at the end of his five years to ask you for your support. And I believe that should be an easy choice to make. It will be an easy choice to make. I recall when he came on the platform, first of all, he said he is asking for your support for the first five years and he will earn the rest. And based on his performance over the last five years, he has certainly earned the next five. But I will speak about the Honorable Spencer Brand a bit later. I don't want to get into all of the things that he has done, yes, because he'll come and he will report to you. Tonight is his night to present his report card to you. And his report card is one with, I will call, a stellar report. Because Spencer Brand has performed well, and he will report to you accordingly. But tonight is a night for us to talk politics, whether it's party politics, island politics, all of the politics. And I did start by saying that the only serious party in these elections is the Concerned Citizens Movement. We have heard a lot of things from the NRP have been saying that nothing happened in Nevis. What? I believe these people got to be blind or a stick broke off in the ear. What? what? And I'm being serious because anybody who loves this island, who care about this island, and keep saying night after night, day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year, that nothing is happening in this island, you got to be either deaf, blind, or I was going to say dumb. But yes, I said it. And you must say things as they are. Because when we were in opposition, I'll say to you that we gave commendation to the NRP for certain things they did. That is what a serious party does. That is what a party that have the best interests of the people of Nevis at heart, they will commend when commendation is necessary. But every single thing that the CCM has done, every accomplishment that we have had on this island, the NRP keeps saying, not not men. But you know what? I believe it stems from the leadership, you know, because the leader has been asleep for 20 years, so he wake up out of a slumber. And all that she says, nothing is happening. And everybody that is in the party that follows her keeps saying nothing is happening. Well, let me report to you. Let me report to you, because when we ask the NRP to join the CCM, in 2020, when we were visited by COVID-19, we asked them to come on board. Come on board and let's fight to secure the island of Nevis, to protect the island of Nevis. They met with the Premier, the Honorable Mark Brantley. The Premier of Nevis wrote to them, and they responded and said they will have nothing to do with that effort. Nothing. They turned down the offer that was made to them. That's why I said they can't be serious. Once they would have turned that down, we understood that we were on our own. The CCM, as the government of the day, had to do what was necessary to protect the people of Nevis. And that is what we did. 
Because the records will show that under the leadership of Mark Brantley and the CCM, Nevis was well protected. Well protected during COVID-19. I'll also say this to you, that we are not a party that comes up with excuses. We don't bend our buckle to pressure. We don't allow any negativity to dissuade us. We have always kept focus as a party and as a government. And that is why we came through COVID-19 in flying colors. Flying colors, that is. We were able to recover, and we are still in a state of recovery. But the efforts that we would have made during COVID-19, the results are there to show. You remember the first thing we did? The first thing we did, we said, in standing in solidarity with the people of Nevis, every cabinet member will take 10% pay cut. We did so because we understood the hardship that was on the horizon for the people of Nevis. We wanted to be consistent in our efforts. Not only that, the Premier of Nevis would have given up an entire whole salary throughout that period of time. He would have done so. And so I want to commend the cabinet of the Nevis Island administration, the CCM as a party in government, for standing up for the people of Nevis. When the NRP said no, we said yes. When the NRP refused, we forged ahead. And we have continued to forge ahead as a party. When COVID-19 hit, we understood that there would have been difficulties with shipment of goods to the island of Nevis, and we figured that we have to do things locally to ensure that we keep our people in good standing. So we came up with some initiatives, nothing to do with the NRP, because they said they were not going to be a part of it with us. We came up with initiatives to ensure that persons were able to eat. And that is why agriculture became one of those focus, major focus of this administration. And I can talk about agriculture all night. I'm the Minister of Agriculture, yes. But I won't spend a lot of time because there'll be many more nights when we'll go through that. But you remember we, give out, we gave out free seedlings, free seeds, fencing wire. We assisted our farmers in every possible way. When NRP said there was nothing happening, good things were happening then because the government was focused. The government was putting out the effort to ensure that our people could feed themselves. Not only that, you know of the flame industry that we introduced during COVID-19. And you know why that happened? It's because when MSR Media came, they came to Nevis and they saw what was happening. They were looking for an island or a country that had a stellar record in managing the pandemic. Nevis proved to be that destination. And they came and they would have built uh, industry here on the island of Nevis and the NRP has kept on criticizing it morning, noon and night they kept on criticizing the more they criticize the more film being, our films being produced I hear we are going to produce almost 30 of them over the next 5 years or more I don't remember the number but Nevisions have become actors and actresses overnight that is talent being utilized by MSR Media. Not only that, there is employment being created. And all of the negativity you have heard, there have been positive things coming out of that particular industry. So your CCM party has continued to work. Not only that, they keep criticizing that same peer over there at Uali. And that has been an investment in the people of Nevis and the island of Nevis that has proven to be one of the best investments in recent years. And when I talk about investment, we sit around the cabinet table every single Wednesday. And every time we discuss matters, it is always meant to bring about a change in the circumstances of the people of Nevis. So when we constructed that pier, you know, they started talking, oh, you know what they say? They talk about corruption and I say to them all the time, when you talk about corruption, bring the evidence. Bring the evidence when you talk about corruption because I can say everybody in this island is corrupt and I don't have any, uh, any evidence. It means nothing. So we have brought the evidence to the people of Nevis and I've said to you that when we thought about that construction, we went and got $6 million from the SIDF. $6 million. We bought the property. 
cost just about $3.8 million EC. We built the pier, it cost just about $1.6 million EC. We fenced the area, we put security in place, we have sent, spent just about $5.8 million. And when I talk about that investment, it was an investment in property, yes, in infrastructure, but most importantly, it was an investment in the people of Nevis because you have heard from time to time that the only operators out there are Nevisions. Nevisions. All of the business owners over there are Nevisions. So it was an investment in the island of Nevis and the people of Nevis. That is what a serious party in government does. And this will be an, a, an election about who is serious and who is not. But that investment, from what I understood from the Premier last night, who is the minister responsible for NASPA, over 132 persons have traversed through that property. Through that property, back and forth to St. Kitts and back to Nevis. That is a significant number, 132,000 persons. I would say over 132,000 persons. That is a serious investment. And we'll make additional investment shortly where we'll buy some lands around that property. Just about 9.0 acres of land will cost us just about 1.9 million EC dollars. That is a good bit of negotiation on the part of your CCM government. So we'll have that area properly secured. Parking will be in place. All of the necessary amenities will be there. That will be the shining beacon for the island of Nevis. When our visitors come, when our citizens, our residents go back and forth through that facility, they'll be pleased about that investment. That is seriousness on the part of the CCM. Seriousness. And I want to say to you that no matter what the other side comes with, they can't be serious. I'll tell you why they can't be serious. When we were away in the Republic of China, Taiwan, I hear they were having some big march down here in Nevis. I say, well, I'm here, here again. I tell the Premier, if NRP get 50 people for that march, I am not going to contest these elections. Are you not be serious about elections? So that was a serious proclamation to make. So when I heard they had 21 people down there, I said, well, I run in. I said I'm running in the elections, but imagine they're down there protesting and marching against themselves. And what I mean by that, they're protesting against the electoral process and the electoral office. What? I wonder if the NRP believe that the people of Nevis have forgotten about them. In 2011, over 200 persons were removed from the voters list here in Nevis. Over 200 persons were removed. And guess what? We didn't sit idly by. We felt that the people of Nevis had to be defended. And the CCM with the Honorable Mark Brantley would have defended over 200 persons and the electoral process here on the island of Nevis. Where was the NRP? You know, I heard the girl that Cleon said one night the only election the NRP would have won is the one in 2006. She was so right. So right, because 2011, they stole an election in this island. The people of Nevis have never forgotten that. And we ain't gonna forget the NRP either. You heard Troy said earlier that they must apologize. I know they ain't going to apologize. And the fact that they ain't apologizing, the people of Nevis here, home and abroad, will come and vote and make sure they keep NRP right where they're in the opposition. <laughs> right in opposition, they'll stay. Because they're downtown protesting, marching. Marching against what? We can recall the days of Pastor Benjamin. You all remember that? We remember the days of Parrot George. You remember that in 2015? You all remember those days. But since we have had elections since 2015, 2017, 2020, 2022, not one soul can point an accusational finger against the CCM and the supervisor of election and the electoral process. So they have tried and they have sought to manufacture something. But I'll say to the NRP, 
the same person out there in the diaspora, those in the Virgin Islands, those in St. Martin, those in New York, those in England, wherever they're going to come from, the same persons whose name you have taken off, you are going to bring them here and they're going to come and vote for the CCM. Look how easy we go have a day. Everything we do is about a day. Now Mr. Martin. They think people forget they're going to jump on an happy plane and come right down here and vote for CCM. Because they have not forgotten when you commit such crime against humanity. It cannot stand. It cannot be forgotten also. There are persons who are waiting to come to send that message once again to the NRP. Because they felt like they didn't do nothing wrong, you know? Up to today, the NRP don't only feel like they did anything wrong. But the results will show that the people of Nevis who are wronged by the NRP, they're still here to vote. The people overseas, they're still coming to vote. And they're going to come and vote. So I welcome one and all. Because the NRP has been criticizing the CCM for going to the Virgin Islands, for going to St. Martin, for going to New York. But we have gone. This is a party that represents people here on Nevis, residents and citizens. We represent persons in the diaspora as well. We know they have a love and connection for the island of Nevis because they have property here. They have family here. They have a love for this island. They believe in this government. They believe in this island and they will come and vote. What is there to stop them? Why is the NRP afraid of them? I believe all of us here have someone who lives in all of these countries, whether in the United States or Virgin Islands or wherever. So what do you mean? We should stop them from coming to contribute? When we need a dollar, we send up, we send a, a note, a text, or maybe a call and tell them, send me $10 now. So, I mean, they're only good to send you money? They're only good to send you a box or a package? No. They do so because they have a love for you. They have a love for your well-being. They have a love for your island. And they must come and vote. And I invite them to come and vote until there's a change in the electoral process. They can come and vote. So why is the NRP afraid of the overseas vote? Why are they afraid? In 2011, they had some embassies set up over in St. James, you know. They went for second, third, fourth, and fifth generations up in the United States and England. They brought them here overnight. They came here on a Friday afternoon. By Monday morning, they had their citizenship. By Monday afternoon, they already registered on a plane heading back to the United States. You all forget. I haven't forgotten. Because between April or January and April of 2011, over 295 persons were put on the list in St. James. All of them were from England and from the United States. We haven't forgotten that. So you mean the overseas votes was good then, but it ain't good now. What? That is what NRP is telling us. NRP has had some demeaning words to call the overseas votes. The one who running up in St. John's. Say, we're going to be importing votes. Well, I wonder if the overseas votes are boxes and packages. You see, when it's not good for them, I ain't suit them. They have the worst thing to say. And then I'll be keep calling down the island of Nevis, calling down the people of Nevis, calling down the process, calling down everything. Because it's negativity they thrive on. But I want to bring a positive light to everything. The country running good, man. Don't you think? DJ, you should be playing country running good. Or that it? <laughs> country running good, man. On the Mark Brantley and the CCM. And when the country is running good, there's no need for us to gamble with our future. Our future starts now. And this future that we have going here in Nevis, or what is happening in Nevis leading into the future, must be protected. And it starts with this election to ensure we keep NRP right where they are. They keep saying that NRP best for Nevis. I'm going to tell the people of Hamilton and the people of Nevis NRP best to keep from. The best to keep from because I know not one of them starting with the leader go right down to the one running in Gingerland. Not one of them have come into politics with the right intention. Examine them. The reasons they came into politics have no thing to do with the people of Nevis and the island of Nevis. Not one of them are serious about representing anybody. What? Examine them. From one. 
go right down to five. Check them out. And we're going to examine them as we go along. But ladies and gentlemen, we are here to support the Honorable Spencer brand. The only brand in town. Brand ain't have no rare and no rara in your life. I'm going to say it again. Brand don't have no rare and no rara in his life. And we don't want no Rere and no Rara to represent the people of Charlestown. We got rid of Rere and Rara in 2017. With all kind of things swirling around the representative then. Well, you got another Rere and a Rara coming now again. So Brand has presented to the people of Charlestown one of the most, one of the most, I'm looking for the right adjective. One of the most decent man or decent representative you can find. And I say that because Spencer Brand has carried himself as a representative should do. Meaning, you ever heard any scandal about Spencer Brand? And I don't care what the former prime minister is thinking. Say, give them a little script to run over here and they take it and run. Like, as soon as you try a little car and the fowl pick it up and run. Just like that. But Spencer Brand is a man who would have said, as I said before, give him the chance. You gave him the chance. And he's going to come and tell you what he has done in water, what he has done in roads, what he has done in the environment, what he has done for the people of Charleston, what he has done for the island of Nevis, and what he has done beyond the shores of Nevis. Because he has represented Nevis abroad as well. And I want to say to the people of Hamilton, the people of Charlestown, the entire constituency of St. Paul's. Spencer Brand has sat around a cabinet with myself and the other members for the last five years. And one of the things that I have to commend him for is that when we were looking around Charlestown or St. Paul's for lands to construct additional housing, Spencer Brand was the man who made it happen. Even though I'm the Minister of Agriculture and Lands, Spencer Brand went searching and he came. He did all that was necessary to put in the necessary negotiations on the table to ensure that we secured lands here in Hamilton and down at Craddock Road. He wanted to make sure that persons in Charleston who wanted to stay in Charleston, who wanted to continue with the overall building and development of Charleston, that they stay here. And I have to commend him because there's some beautiful homes down here at Craddock Road, Mountain View, Crescent, and up here at Sugar, Sugar Mill, Sugar Mill Development. He was the one who was responsible. And so persons are able to stay in the constituency in which they were born and raised and continue to contribute to make sure that St. Paul's continue to thrive and continue to be number one here on the island of Nevis. And I said number one because every constituency is thriving and striving to be number one. So Spencer Brand is going to come back to you and he's going to ask you for a new mandate. And I believe in an overwhelming fashion because when you look at the candidate that is running against Spencer Brand, I don't want to talk about her. I don't care about her anyway. All I'm certain about is that the people of Hamilton the people of Stony Grove, the people of Craddock Road, the people of Ramsbury, Charleston proper, will ensure that Spencer Brand is returned from this next election as your next representative. So he'll join Mark Brantley, Alexis Jeffers, Eric Evelyn, Latoya Brianca Jones, all five for us. You have to be a part of the party. You have to be a part of the party, Sam Paul. You can't be left behind because I know for sure all of the other constituency will stick with their representative and include number five this time, bring them at the table to work for the people of St. Thomas's. That is Latoya. So Spencer Brand, we are already crowning you once again as a representative of St. Paul's. <laughs> We're already crowning you as a representative of St. Paul, so I won't take much more of your time. Spencer, it is your time to report to the people of St. Paul's. I want to say that the CCM is ready to rumble 
Rumbling number one, rumbling number two, rumbling number three, rumbling number four, rumbling number five. So it's much rumbling all up and down Nevis for this election because we are confident about our stance as a party. We are confident about the work, are confident about the work we have done as a party. And so the people of Nevis will repose their confidence in this great party. We love you, St. Paul's. We love you, Nevis. And as I always say, that we'll continue to work in your favor because our intention is to leave Nevis better than we met it. And we have all five to do so. Five constituencies. Thank you very much for listening. It was indeed my pleasure tonight. We'll have many more nights to speak a longer time, but that has been my quarter for tonight. So CCM people, who you voting for? Hamilton people, who are you voting for? Spencer Brand. That is the man. Vote for Spencer. Vote for CCM. Vote for the best party on this island. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you very much, Honorable Alexis Jeffers. That's a, that's a lot. A lot of energy. CCM got energy. We got the momentum, and we're going to take the momentum all the way to election day. Y'all, when you come up here, be kind of careful. I realize the podium shaking a little bit. The bell might start to ring before the time. Take it easy. We don't want it ringing before it's time to ring. Ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing with our meeting. Hamilton, how are you feeling? I was just checking out the live. YouTube and Facebook is a buzz. Somebody said on the live, not a soul a study NRP. It's CCM we voting. You see, the people of Nevis know that when it comes to representation, only the concerned citizens' movement is standing up for the people of Nevis. The NRP, they are coming to you with a set of promises, empty promises. But the concerned citizens' movement, we are coming to you with our record of performance and our record of achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, the best slate the best slate is the concerned citizens' movement. All sides. One, two, three, four, and five. From top to bottom, CCM is the best all around. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in Hamilton, Nevis 1, Charlestown. And I want to call to the stage now. To address you, the representative for Nevis One, the representative for Charlestown, the man who is going to win back representation in number one in this upcoming election when it's all said and done and the votes are counted. There will only be one brand, one brand in number one, one brand for Charles Sound, and that's the Honorable Spencer Brand for CCM and for Nevis. Welcome, Spencer Brand, to the podium, ladies and gentlemen. On election day, he's on a hammer now. It's only one choice, we vote for CCM. On election day, he's on a bank now. It's only one choice, we vote for CCM. Who we voting for? 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 Good night, good night, good night, good night, everybody. Good night, Hamilton. Let me say a very pleasant good evening.
to all who are here gathered in the heart of Hamilton. Let me also say a very pleasant good evening to all those who are viewing and listening to this meeting on our various online platforms. And tonight, we are here in the heart of Hamilton. And ladies and gentlemen, I sat down today and I started to write down some bit of information. I took some time today, ladies and gentlemen, to put some facts to paper. But before I get to the facts, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank my colleague, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, for his presentation. Because in this CCM party, we all rally with each other. I also want to thank the Honorable Troy Youth and Liban for his presentation and endorsement, as did the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I came tonight with some prepared information. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we have some people going around saying that nothing has happened in St. Paul's. We have some people going around saying that Brian not have done for town. What? But I want to bring to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, some facts. Before I bring some facts to you, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the Charleston Primary School for winning the football championship, the football primary school championship. I want to say to Minister Jeffers and the St. James's Primary School, better luck next time. You did well. You did well. But I had absolutely no doubt in my mind that Charleston Primary School would have do what they had to do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me stay, let me stay in the celebratory mood. I want to also congratulate Mr. Bertram Roach, who celebrated his 100th birthday a few weeks ago. And in a couple of days, ladies and gentlemen, the post office will issue a stamp edition with Mr. Bertram Roach and Mr. Hendrickson's picture and the two centenarians from the constituency of St. Paul's. And I want to say to them, congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to use this opportunity once again to offer my condolences to the Jones family on the passing of Stephen. I believe all of us here in Hamilton and St. Paul's would have recognized the contribution that Mr. Jones would have made to the island of Nevis. And I want to say to his dear wife and his family that we are indeed grateful for the contribution that Mr. Jones has made to the island of Nevis. And we want to say to you tonight, that we continue to remember you and your family in our prayers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the NRP have brought a young lady to run against me in Charleston. And while I will not say anything about the young lady, I will say this much, that I'm disappointed. I am extremely disappointed in this young lady. You know why? Because well, I am disappointed. You know why I'm disappointed? I am disappointed because this young lady, in her first political walk, have sought to mislead the people of Charleston and mislead the people of Nevis. This young lady have sought to go around the constituency and have become a stranger to the truth as to what has happened in St. Paul's. But I'm going to bring some facts tonight. 
because one can have the opinion, but facts are a stubborn thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right here in Hamilton, right here in Hamilton, we constructed a 400,000 gallon water tank right here in Hamilton. I recognize that as soon as there was issue with water, that Hamilton and Charlestown was one of those areas that were immediately affected. And I thought that this can't be right. You can't be serious that in the town and in the city, every time there is water issue, that the city have problem. And I said, no, I intended to fix that. So I would have erected a 400,000 gallon water tank right here in Hamilton. I would have ensured, ladies and gentlemen, that there was a stone tank there with the roof collapse. And I would have ensured that we reconstructed a steel frame roof on that storage tank, adding an additional 300,000 gallons of water in the area of Hamilton. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Welcome. I am here to say to you tonight also, that we met a well here in Hamilton, a very high yielding well. But it did not meet World Health Organization standard. And we ensured that we installed a water filtration system on that well so that we can have the necessary water for the, the, the parish of St. Paul's and the constituency of Nevis number one. But yet, but yet, my opponent is saying that nothing happened. I am saying to you, we went further as well. We ensured that we secured our water plant here in Hamilton by fencing the entire perimeter of that property. We didn't want anyone to go inside there and interfere with what we did there. I am here to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, while we recognize that the island of Nevis were being populated with low-income housing throughout the length and breadth of Nevis. The St. Paul's constituency did not have any land that was owned by the government. And I went to the length and breadth of St. Paul's and found some land right here in Hamilton. I took it to my cabinet colleagues. I begged and I plead and they supported that initiative. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen the construction of 14 homes on that piece of land in Hamilton. So I want to ask those 14 families who would have gone to the bank, who would have got a mortgage, who would have been approved by the Navy's Housing and Land Development Corporation, who is paying their mortgage on a monthly basis. Isn't that something? Isn't that... Isn't that an accomplishment by these 14 families who now can say to the world that they have their own homes? But yet, but yet, the NRP candidate is saying that nothing happened. I want to say to those 14 families in Hamilton, when she come to you and asks you for your vote, tell them go about your business. On election day, we gonna have my devil. It's only one choice, we want to succeed ever. All of that right here in Hamilton. But yet, they say nothing has happened. When I became the representative in St. Paul's, one of the first piece of road that I did was the road from the Mills and the Jones family all the way over to the Stevens family. And you know why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, on that stretch of road, we had, as one of the residents on that stretch of road, the first Nivijan, the first Leeward Islander, the first person to make the West Indies cricket team. But yet, but yet, that road was a two strip. And I said, no. I said, no. They deserve better. And that was one of the first stretch of road that I did as the area representative in St. Paul. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, when I say to you that the NRP candidate that is coming up against me is a stranger to the truth, these are some of the facts, ladies and gentlemen. The Minister of Education said, no, it wasn't the Minister of Education, it was Alexis Jeffers said that they are either blind. I don't believe that they're blind. I believe that they are being deceitful. I believe that they are a stranger to the truth. And I'm here to say to the people of Hamilton tonight, don't let them fool you with no lies. You have eyes to see and ears to hear for yourself. Don't let them fool you at all. Now, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I have given you a few points as to what have been accomplished only in Hamilton alone. Let's look at Stony Grove. Some road was done in Stony Grove and a section of that road was left out. I am hearing that the piece of road was left out because a particular gentleman lived on the piece of road. And I said, what foolishness is this? What? What? I, am, I, I said, what foolishness is this? They did an entire stretch of road under the NRP then and they left out a particular section because, according to them, a particular gentleman live on the piece of the road. And I said to myself, but wait, when the rain fall, he fall on CCM supporter house and forget NRP house? When a hurricane is coming, it's going to hit. It's going to damage a CCM supporter and leave an NRP supporter? And that is the kind of small-mindedness that the NRP is coming with. And I'm saying to the people of St. Paul's, I want you to reject that thinking. I want you to reject that thinking. I remember when the Honorable Mark Bantley became the Premier of Nevis. He said that he wanted to have a one Nevis policy. I know he gets some costs from CCM supporters for that. But the idea was that all of us are divisions. All of us must be able to survive in our country. And that is why we have developed a policy for all of Nevis. And so I went and I did the piece of road that started from D.C. Dale Claxton went around to the sixth form. It was left out. It was left out because, according to somebody, that a particular gentleman lived under. That is in Stony Grove. I am saying to you, as your representative in Stony Grove, we went and did a complete refurbishment of the netball complex in Charlestown. It sat there for many years, and it took a CCM administration to breathe some life back into that netball complex. I hear some people saying that it was because of them, and I smile. I smile. You know why? Because they don't know half of the story. They don't know half of the story. Some of them believe that they know everything. Some of them believe that they have the answers for all of our problems, but they don't know half of the story. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm reading from my notes, you know, because I have a lot of things. We also ensured, ladies and gentlemen, that the tennis court in Charlestown, right there in Stony Grove, was resurfaced. But yet, they said nothing happened. They said nothing happened. We are in the process of completing some road construction, ladies and gentlemen, in Stony Grove, behind my good friend, Henry Hennis. And they said nothing happened. Ladies and gentlemen, we undertook a road enhancement project from right there by the water department barbecue area all the way up to Salome James and in that village and they say nothing happened. They say nothing happened. We ensured, ladies and gentlemen, that the road all the way from Hosford's down to Rams and from the roundabout up to Water Department Depot was resurfaced and they say nothing happened. But it's the thing about it, you know, they're driving it morning, noon and night. Five times a day, ten times a day, they're driving it. And that is why I say to you that I am disappointed in the young lady. I am disappointed because she has become a stranger to the truth. And I want to say to the people of St. Paul's, don't allow anybody to come and fool you.
you have eyes to see for yourself. If that is the best that they can do, tell them come again. Tell them come again. Look how easy we go have a day. Everything we do is a bad day. Let's look at Government Road. We ensure that the entire stretch of Government Road, the entire stretch of Government Road, from just below the hospital all the way down to the island main road we surface. They're driving it five times a day, but nothing happened. Nothing happened. Ladies and gentlemen, the government has been in desperate need of land in the St. Paul's area. There is a piece of land that I was able to acquire right below the baby beer nursery right there on Hamilton. Our intention was to construct a community facility there. That land was purchased in 2019. But what happened in 2020? COVID came. All of that plans had to be put on the shelf. But maybe they don't know that government owned the land. But then again, I thought they knew everything. I thought they had an answer for everything. We ensured that we acquired that piece of land to the top of government road, to the intersection of the pump road and government road. We are Mikey and the boys. We are my good friend, Sister Sensi, is playing her trade. That land is owned by government. Sister C, sorry. They didn't get so far because they don't know how to do things properly. We acquired that land. That is another piece of land for the people of Government Road and Hamilton to put some community facility. But ladies and gentlemen, maybe they don't know or they choose not to know or I believe that they like to tell lie. That is what I conclude. That they have become a stranger to the truth. And I'm saying it here in Hamilton tonight and I'm going to keep saying that I am disappointed in the young lady because in this walk of politics, you must be able to tell the people the truth and let the people decide which candidate is the best. And I know I am better by far. Better by far. In Ramsbury, in Ramsbury, we had a lot of challenges in Ramsbury. You know, those of you in Quadacode would know that right there by the flow office, there was always a cesspool of water right there. And we used to have some children from Government Road and Stony Grove having to walk to the Charleston Primary School. But when you have heavy rains, they couldn't pass. Why? Because that pool of water was right there. And we went in and fixed that. It may be a simple thing, but we went in and fixed it. Is it that they don't know? Or did they simply choose to lie? And we must ask ourselves those questions. Is it that they don't know or they choose to lie? Ladies and gentlemen, the Joe Hart Road was fed by a three quarter inch water line. And all of you know where Joe Hart shop is. And you know that there is a number of homes going down. A three quarter inch line, we went in and installed a two inch line down there so that the people can have a stable pressure in water. Is it that they don't know or they choose to ignore? But yet, nothing happened. Ladies and gentlemen, in Ramsbury, we continue to struggle with some drainage issues in Ramsbury. But there were some particular problems in the area of Sylvia Thomas, where a number of homes would often be flooded. And we went in and constructed a huge drain. And we ensured that those Five, six, eight families can sleep at night when rain comes because the flooding issue was eliminated. And I'm here to say to you tonight that we have other challenges when it comes to drainage. We have an issue down by Pastor Griffin, an issue that we intend to fix in the new dispensation. But ladies and gentlemen, while they are picking at things. They are not offering solutions to the people of Nevis. I am here to say to you tonight that we have solutions for the people of Nevis. And 
and I'm going to keep saying tonight, and I'm going to drive it home in the head, that they are a stranger to the truth. They are a stranger to the truth. Every single day. Every single day. Four times, five times a day. They drive on spanking new roads there by the Anglican wall and they say nothing happened. They drive on brand new spanking new roads there by the Methodist church and they say nothing happened. They drive on brand new spanking road going across by the Jews cemetery and nothing happened. They drive on brand new spanking road on Chapel Street and Happy Hilali and they say nothing happened. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. I come into that. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe and I submit to you tonight that they have become a stranger to the truth. Because you can walk on something every day. You can drive on something every day. You can touch something every day. But you got it hard to tell nearest people that nothing happened. It means that you are a blatant liar. That is what you have become. And I'm disappointed. I'm going to keep saying tonight, I'm disappointed. I don't mind you come and you say to me, well, you are the representative of St. Paul's. Perhaps you could have done this this way or do this that way and come to the table with something constructive. But when you are going to say to the people that nothing happened, it means that you are a liar. It means that you are a stranger to the truth. What a quote. Somebody mentioned quite a quote. And I'm going to talk about color code, you know, because I had the experience of a very not so young gentleman in color code. And I watched tears run down that gentleman's eye. He said he is close to 70 years. He is close to 70 years. And this is the first time that he have seen someone have really given quote unquote some true care and attention. But yet, my opponent is trying to convince you that nothing has happened. In quote unquote, ladies and gentlemen, we remove all of those old cast iron pipe in quote unquote. Pipes that were there for 40 years nearly 50 years, we remove all of those cast iron pipes and we replace them with 4 inch PVC water line from the top of Quarter Code all the way down to Harlem Shelter Bar. But nothing happened. We continue from Big Rock and we went down to the entrance of the gas station down there in Pines with those water lines. But nothing happened. I get cussed for touching Big, big Rock. They cost me about bigger. They say all manner of evil against me that me this and me that, me all kind of chupiness. And I said to myself, but these people really serious? We are bringing development to our community and they are cussing and talking about a rock. Yes, it is a historic rock, but I can say to you, we have seen developments throughout the length and breadth of this world where people have moved entire villages in the name of development. But taking off a piece of a rock was an issue. Well, I'm going to tell them, you know, I got another piece of rock to take off. I got another piece of rock to take off. Right above the hospital there, opposite my good friend Vanessa Mackie Phillip, I'm going to take off a piece of the rock there because it's a hazard. And if I get cussed, for making the roads in Navy safer, then I'm going to take the cost. I'm going to take the cost. Quarter Code. We constructed the entire stretch of Quarter Code from the top of Quarter Code all the way down to Harlem Shelter Bar. We ensured that the road was also constructed from Big Rock all the way down to the gas station. And drive on it now, they drive on it, finally driving on it and walking on it and campaigning and oh, you laugh. They said nothing happened. Oh, you, 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 I forget that at all. You see what I tell you? You see what I tell you? I ain't even get half of the things yet. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, in quote code, 
we also dealt with some drainage issues in Quadra Code. Some drainage issues. Right behind the Barrett family there, there was some issue behind there with drainage. We went in and fixed that and remedied that problem. And this is why I'm saying to you that we intend to con continue that project all the way down to Pastor Griffin. Because it is an issue and we will fix the issue. We are here about solution, ladies and gentlemen. My good friend here remind me about Flamingo Road. I forget so much different things. But, ladies and gentlemen, I took some time today to write down some of these facts to say to my opponent, sadly, you have become a stranger to the truth. I want to say to the people of St. Paul's, I have come to you with a vision of change. I want to say to the people of Hamilton that we are just getting started. They don't want to admit that we had a global pandemic on Nevis. They believe that Nevis was insulated from this pandemic. They don't want to admit that the island of Nevis was shut down for almost two years, a year and a half plus. They don't want to admit it. But we must ask ourselves the question. What did they do to rally the vision, to get on board, to stand up to fight against this pandemic? They cost people, they tell the premier, not them. The premier say he barely beg, he plead. And then it's the command. And they want to come to Nevis people and ask them to vote for them. They got the heart to come to Nevis people when they needed to stand up for new visions, when they needed to rub shoulder with the government and say, we are with you in this fight. They said, not them. Well, I want the, the whole of is tell them, not you. Not you. On election day, it's on It's only one choice. We vote for Ladies and gentlemen, Somebody tell me that something special might happen tonight. So I'm going to wrap up. I don't know what that special thing is because I'm just getting warmed up. I want to say to the people of Hamilton and to the people of St. Paul's what some of my vision are for the constituency. My good friend from Quarter Court came and he said he wanted to hear from me tonight. I hope he's still around here because I have a message for him. And I have a message for the whole of St. Paul as to what my vision and my mission is in the next dispensation. You see, while we have some challenges, we must be able to look into the future. We must be able to inspire our people to think big. We must be able to rally the island of Nevis for bigger and better things. And in the next dispensation, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to say to you that in Charlestown, we had a fisherman pier there that was destroyed by a hurricane some years ago. I intend to see that fisherman pier be reconstructed. It is necessary and it is needed. I have a quotation already from someone who is an expert in constructing piers. And I'm saying to the fishermen in Charlestown, I'm saying to the fishermen in Nevis that that fisherman pier will be reconstructed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a situation in Charlestown. We have two areas in Charlestown where buses normally congregate. We have buses from Gingerland and we have buses from Newcastle. And all of us recognize that the Conditions and the surroundings where those buses often congregate is less than ideal. And I've been looking around in Charlestown, looking around on the outskirts of Charlestown for some lands, for some property to build two state-of-the-art bus terminals. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that if you are going to Gingerland or if you are going to Newcastle, you must be in some level of comfort. 
my vision is after we would have acquired two portion of land right on the outskirts of Charlestown to construct two bus terminals state of the art bus terminal with a restaurant with a gift shop for the people who uses the Newcastle bus terminal and for the people who uses the Gingerland bus terminal because I believe ladies and gentlemen it is time for that to happen I have said to you before that we have acquired two portions of land right here. One below the baby beer nursery and one at the top of Paddock Road. One at the top of Government Road, sorry. It is my intention to ensure that a community facility is constructed there for the people of Hamilton. It is high time. Ladies and gentlemen, just before COVID, just before COVID, I assembled a team, a committee of persons who had an interest in culture. And I asked the question, why is it that in Charlestown we cannot have a city fest? I asked the question, why is it in Charlestown we cannot have a city fest? We have all of the cultural facilities in Charlestown. And I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, that in the next dispensation, we will ensure that the constituency of St. Paul will have a city fest. We have, we have talented people in St. Paul's. We have some of the best Calypsonians in St. Paul's. We have talented young ladies and young men who can sing, who can model, who can do a lot of things. But we will ensure, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a city fest in the new dispensation. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a conversation with a gentleman some time ago. It was just before a hurricane was coming. And he said to me, boy, we need to build a boat lift somewhere in Charlestown. Because the minute we have a little hurricane, everybody is scrambling to get their boats out of the water. And you know, I thought about it. I drove around. I had a conversation with a gentleman in Bath Plain. And I discussed the idea with him. And he simply said to me, Well, you know, when you're ready, come and talk to me. And knowing the gentleman, he's a very serious gentleman. And I know that when I go to him and say to him that I want a portion of his land to build a boat lift for the boaters on Nevis, he will tell me how much you want. And I believe that it would be a good partnership for the marinas on the island of Nevis. So I intend to construct a boat lift somewhere in the Bath Village area for our marinas, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I grew up in my teenage years in Happy Hill Alley. And those of you who don't know where Happy Hill Alley is, I believe everybody knows where Happy Hill Alley is. Every single morning, from Monday to Friday, I had to go to beach. I went to beach. And every morning, my exercise was to swim from the shore all the way to the pier and come back. I swam with some of the movers and shakers in Charlestown. Some of you may know a gentleman by the name of Edmund Williams. I don't know if you know him. Of blessed memory. Eulalie Williams. My dear Aunt Gertrude Roberts. My late father Hubert Pan. Edith and Alma Howell. Western Paris. I was a little boy between these powerful people on the island of Nevis. And what I learned from them was an appreciation of Gallows Bay. And I'm saying to you that in the next dispensation, we will ensure that we have some swimming classes and swimming lessons right here on Gallows Bay for all the people of St. Paul's.
We are surrounded by water and all of our people must be able and know how to swim. So that is an initiative, ladies and gentlemen, I intend to bring to life in the new dispensation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a playing field in Ramsbury. And I feel that that playing field has not developed in the manner in which it ought to have developed. I am saying to you tonight that in the next dispensation, we will ensure that we construct some facilities there at that playing field in Ramsbury. We will fence that property. And my good friend from St. James is often said that the VOJ playing field is the number one field in Nevis. For now. For now. But I'm saying to you that we will ensure that we develop that playing field in Ramsbury, ladies and gentlemen. We have sat, good night, Fisher. We have sat with the Ministry of Youth and Sports and we have discussed what we wanted to do. I think I remember seeing Jamie somewhere around the place here. I don't know if he left. He's still here. But you can ask him. We have sat. We have looked at what can happen there. We have sat with the people at the Nevis Cricket Association, the president, and I've outlined to them what I'm thinking. And basically, they have given their stamp of approval. You can ask them. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to say to you tonight that we will ensure that there must be a community facility in Ramsbury. We have identified some land, but again, our good friend and our deterrent of COVID derailed that land. I am here to say to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we will ensure that that community facility in Ramsbury is constructed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a building in the heart of Charlestown, the old customs building. And it is, in my mind, a gem of a property in Charlestown. It is my hope and my vision to ensure that we do something to that property, have it reconstructed and renovated for public use in the heart of Charlestown. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to have some challenges in Ramsbury, the road network, and some drainage. I am here to say to you tonight that in the next dispensation, we will give the road network and the drainage in Ramsbury some serious consideration and have it resolved. I am here to say to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that we will ensure that other road development in and around St. Paul's is done for the benefit and the, the development of our constituency. Ladies and gentlemen, those are just a few of the initiatives that I intend to bring online in the next dispensation. I want to say to the people of St. Paul's, this is just a simple snippet of what I'm thinking when it comes to St. Paul's. The other side will come and they will promise you all kind of fancy things. But I am a practical person. I am here to say to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, my record is clear for all to see. And for those who refuse to see, I reiterate once again that they have become a stranger to the truth. And tell them me say so. Tell them Spencer, Rudolph, Brancy, that they have become a stranger to the truth. There will be an election, ladies and gentlemen, in this country sooner or later. And I'm saying to the people of Hamilton, I am saying to the people of St. Paul, now is not a time to gamble with your future. I am saying to the people of St. Paul, I am saying to the people of St. John's, I am saying to the people of St. George's, St. James's and St. Thomas's, stick with CCM because CCM will stick with you. What it is that the other side is offering. I have 
tune out long time from what they are saying. Really, I have. Because the level of insult, the level of disrespect that they continue to dish out to the people of Nevis is unbecoming of anyone who is serious about wanting to be in government. So I've tuned out. But ladies and gentlemen, you have one choice in this election. One choice. That is your CCM party. In St. Paul's, you have yours truly. Don't even think about the other person. In St. Thomas's, you have the young Latoya Jones. And I'm saying to the people of St. Thomas's, I am saying to the people of St. Thomas's, come home to CCM. Come home to CCM. In St. James's, you have our Deputy Premier, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. In St. George's, you have the Dancing Minister, the Honorable Eric Evelyn. Who is a little bit under the weather tonight, and I wish him a speedy recovery. And in St. John's, ladies and gentlemen, pound for pound, Ounce for ounce, however you want to cut it. Well, thump for thump. You said licks for licks, I said thump for thump. You have the one man that they seem to be afraid of. But I'm going to say to them, I'm going to say to all of them, they need not to be afraid of him. They need to be afraid of all five of us. Because when the numbers are tallied, They need to be afraid of all five of us. Because when the numbers are tallied, I intend to be in that number. And I know that the Premier intends to be in that number. And I know that Eric intends to be in that number. Alexis intend to be in that number. And I know that Miss Jones intend to be in that number. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have come. Tonight I have put a number of issues on the table. And tonight I stand resolute in my position. That the young lady that is coming up against me in St. Paul's have become a stranger to the truth and I'm disappointed in her. And I'm saying to the people of St. Paul's, when you go out to vote on election day, make sure that you vote for the hammer in St. Paul's. Make sure in St. John's you vote for the hammer. Make sure in Gingerland you vote for the hammer. Make sure in St. James's you vote for the hammer. And make sure in St. Thomas's you vote for the hammer. All five for me is CCM all the way, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good night and God bless. Thank you, Honorable Spencer Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, it could not be put any better. That is the case. That is the case for you to re-elect Spencer Brand. Charles Stone, you need to re-up on the only brand in town. I didn't even realize there's so much things happening in town. Spencer just rattled them off, rattled them off, rattled them off. So much good representation already in Charleston, and he only just getting started. You hear how much things he have waiting for you? A lot of things. And what we have on the other side? 
What do we have on the other side? They walking around telling people nothing happening. What? But you know what they walking with them? They have with them a set of promises. A set of empty promises. That is all they're coming with. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Spencer Brand. The only brand in town. Charles Stone. Stick with the Honorable Spencer Brand. Stick with the Concerned Citizens Movement. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is already hot. Spencer left it hot. My feet burning up here. And we're going to keep it hot tonight. I'm just checking to make sure it's in there. You know? Ladies and gentlemen, make a little noise. DJ start to play a little bit of tune. Help me to welcome to the podium none other than the premier of Nevis and the leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement, the Honorable Mark Brantley. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening to the good people of Hamilton, the people of Government Road, Craddock Road, Ramsbury, all the people can hear me this evening. Good evening to you. Good evening to those who are on the live. And the live is live and lively. I have just listened to the Honorable Spencer Brand. And the only thing I can come up here and say tonight is amen. What else you can say? Because the truth is he has set out a most compelling case of service to the people of St. Paul's. Every part of this constituency and every facet of your life in this constituency, the Honorable Spencer Brand has sought to improve. When I sat there and I listened to him speak tonight and talk about all the projects that he has done, the 35 homes that he has brought, when I reflect on how he fights in the cabinet for his constituency and the people of St. Paul's, I know that Spencer Brand is the only brand in town and the best candidate for the people of St. Paul. You know, when we campaigned some time ago, Spencer said to you, give him the opportunity. Give him one term and he will earn the next. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the evidence is clear that he has earned the right to be re-elected as a proud representative of the people of St. Paul. Nevis One, Spencer Brand, the only brand in town. And you know, he spent some time talking about his opponent. And he said she has become a stranger to the truth. I will not contradict him because he knows her better than me. What I will say is that I don't intend to waste too much time on a CCM platform talking about people who we all know. And if we all know them, we don't need to talk about them. So my point tonight, as I have kept saying, and as we go throughout this island and we talk to our people in their homes, in the byways, and the highways, my point is a simple point. The CCM is running on its record while the NRP is running on promises. It is for you to determine whether that record is good enough. Whether that laundry list of accomplishments that the Honorable Spencer Brand has laid out tonight is good enough. Because whilst they keep going around saying nothing is happening in the country, you see it, you live it, you experience it every day. I don't understand how people could drive on new roads, walk on new roads, enjoy better water, enjoy better electricity, go down to the Malcolm Gishard Park, take the water taxi to send kids from the water taxi pier, go on exercise at the Mondo truck, and still say nothing is happening. They go in town, they pay the bills at the new treasury, they still say nothing is happening. What? Better drainage, improvements in health care. You know, I'll give you an example. And that is why I like to say, just ignore the noise. 
Ignore the noise because some of the noise is so foolish. If you allow yourself, all it does, it seeks to disorient you. Knocks you off your, your meditation and your, your balance because so much foolishness is being said and trying to pass itself off as politics in Nevis. We got a brand new CT scan machine that is already installed. The only thing left for us to do now is the training. And I'm told that the people to do the training will be here the week of November 28th. Now, the CT scan came. It came in a containerized unit. It has been set up with all the expert advice that we could take. You think for a moment they could say that this first, hear me carefully, first piece of equipment of its kind in the Federation. And only one other country in the Eastern Caribbean has one, and that is Grenada. Little Nevis, that machine costs over a million US dollars. And we have that now to assist in moving our healthcare forward. They say, oh, well, why be in a container for? How people going to get to the container? We say, oh, I mean, how people going to get to the container? It is right there. It is literally outside the door of the extra facility. And it has been done with the best advice that we could get. And that is why I say to you that nothing that this party does will ever get any applause or any approval from the opposition because that is their orientation to oppose, to oppose everything. Spencer spoke and said that when I begged them to partner with us on COVID, they wrote a nice little letter and said, not them. Not them. When they could care about you, when they're not prepared to partner on that. We asked for partnership on the vaccination issue. Each and every one of them went and take their vaccine because they wanted to be safe. But they said, no, we will not partner with the government in encouraging anybody else. I am saying to you that you have a clear choice in this election. And unlike those who are coming, who are in opposition and want to get into office, we have a record of achievement on which we can run. And let me remind all of us listening tonight that we did not have an easy five years. That we had from March of 2020, something called the COVID-19 pandemic, the first pandemic to hit the world in over 100 years. And it is a testament to the leadership of the Concerned Citizens Movement that Nevis is still standing today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I remain proud that throughout this pandemic, with hotels closed, airports closed, ports closed, that every single public servant that works for the NIA and every single worker for NEVLEC and NHLDC and NTA and all the other statutory authorities, that they were paid on time and in full. Sometimes we sat in the cabinet and we struggled. How are we going to find the money? Where are we going to find the money? But we ensured that we did the best that we could for our people. Yes, we lost some lives and one life is one too many. But on balance, this government has the best record of COVID management in the entire sub-region. And that is why I'm saying to you, ignore the noise. Because people are coming to you, many of them with their personal, personal acts to grind. I have said and I continue to say that so many of them who now come and tell you how much they love Nevis, you never heard a word from them throughout their long life. They have now come to a stage in their life where they are retirees collecting a pension. And now that they're collecting a pension, they now tell you how much they love you. They now say that they discover how much needs to be done in the communities. But all their 60 plus years, 
They weren't interested in that. And when you start to examine them, you realize that the majority of them, it's about a personal issue. They're upset with somebody because of something. And that is why I'm so happy you see in this team, in this CCM team, Van Samray of Blessed Memory came to me at my home and he asked me to join CCM. I had no axe to grind with anybody. I was a lawyer doing well. And he asked me to join and I said, yes, I will take the, 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 the mantle. I will put up my hand and I will present myself to the people of St. John's to serve them and to serve the island of Nevis. Spencer Brand, he had his architectural firm. He was doing well. We asked him to come and he came. He didn't come because he vexed with somebody. Alexis Jeffers, they used to call him the pool man, but he had the biggest pool business here on the island. Alexis wasn't vexed with somebody. Alexis came because he wanted to serve the people of St. James. Eric Evelyn, well, you know, what can I say about Eric? Many are called, few are chosen. He's one who was chosen. Eric came and he stepped up to the plate because his life has been a life of service to the people of Gingerland. And then look at Latoya Jones, a young woman. They say they want more women in politics. They say they want more young people in politics. Well, we bring a young woman who has put up a hand and says she wants to serve. What has the NRP response been? Cussing, attacking, personal attacks, because that's all they bring to the table. And I have said to her, as I have said to every one of our candidates, that we need not engage with them because we know them. And if we know them, Nevis people know them too. So we don't need to talk about them because everybody knows them and everybody knows who they are. And all we need to focus on is our message, our record of achievements thus far. And our plans and programs for the people of Nevis going forward. Well, I listened to Spencer tonight, spent half the whole budget in St. Paul's. The number of things he says he's going to do. I am back there and I said, I understand why in the Bible Jesus wept. Because we're not sure how all of that can get done. But the island needs development, and we are serious about that development. We have some big plans to do the South Coast Road to develop the lands along the south coast of Nevis from Long Point, go all the way back to Hickmans. We have plans to finally separate our sixth form from the CSS and to build a purpose-built facility, a community college for our young people. We have plans, ladies and gentlemen, to complete that hospital. As much as they're talking about it, that hospital is two and a half times the size of the existing structure. It is taking time, yes, but we will do it right. And when it is done, it will take healthcare not only in Nevis, but in St. Kitts Nevis to the next level. This is a government that is looking forward. We have plans in relation to geothermal energy. We are well advanced now with the Caribbean Development Bank. In fact, they meet on December 9th to consider our proposal and to approve some 18 million US dollars. And where is the geothermal plant going to be? Right here in Hamilton. And so we are asking the people of Hamilton to get yourselves ready. Get yourselves ready because there's a drilling phase. Then there's a construction phase and they're telling us on construction they will need up to 150 individuals to work. And we have said to them, our model of development is to always use the people in the community. And so we expect that those in Hamilton could have a future in geothermal energy right here in their community. Ladies and gentlemen, We've already signed a contract for another phase of the Pinnace Park project. 
We are going to be doing some work there, boardwalk, bathrooms, additional drainage, parking, roadways. When we are done, it will be a marvel to behold. This is a government that is working for you. Over at the water taxi pier, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers has already started the work on the reception area. You see it barricaded now, but there's work going on on the inside. And I am saying to you that we could, if we so desired, come on the platform every night and say, okay, and I'll be cussing us. It's going to be tit for tat. It's going to be butter for fat. Yes. What? It's going to be pong for pong. If that's what they want. Because all of you know me by on Henley Park and me grew up in Brown Hill. And we know like a cuss. We know how to cuss. But at the end of the day, after all the cussing is over, how many jobs does cussing create? How many homes for well-deserving families does cussing create? How does cussing help our healthcare sector? How does it develop our roads and infrastructure? The answer is really that this approach by the NRP does not advance them, it does not advance us, and it does nothing for the advancement of the island of Nevis. So when they want cuss, do like what Lady Saw said, tell them chat to you back. Yeah, you all don't think I know about Lady Saw? Miss Marion Hall? Tell them chat to you back because CCM is not engaged in that. And why? Because, as I said, we know them. We know them. And we know them good, 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 good. And when you know them, you don't need to talk about them because they're all of them. We know who they are. We know the reputation that they have. And we need not worry about that. We simply need to focus. Focus in a laser-like way on what we plan to do. What we have done and what we plan to do. I would wish to apologize, as I'm sure it has been done already, for the absence of the Honorable Eric Evelyn and the Honorable Latoya Jones. They are unable to be with us tonight because they are not feeling well. I ask you to remember them in your prayers because we need them on the campaign trail with us very soon. Now everybody's asking me about Bell, 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 Bell. I never know. That people are so interested in a bell. I don't know what kind of bell. It must be Jingle Bell for Christmas. But everybody is asking about bell. So I want to say to you here in Hamilton tonight. That I don't want to disappoint. But I can't find the tongue for the bell. So I have a big blue bell. And it looks like I have to go down the road here to my partner and tell him, please, the welder, make a tongue for me. So I could put it in the bell and we can ring the bell. The reality, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is that an election is going to come. And it's going to come soon. And we need not worry about some of the distractions. Because it's unfortunate sometimes that institutions, that are important institutions in our country, engage themselves in the politics that we are trying to avoid. There's no divisiveness to our message of hope and our message of moving our people forward. I am asking and urging our people to get on board because our message is one that has resonated over the years. It is no accident that the Concerned Citizens Movement has consistently won elections in Nevis over the past 30 years. And when the other side starts to protest and say that they're leading a march in Charlestown against electoral irregularities, I said, my goodness gracious, reason has truly fled to brutish hearts. Because if there's anybody in the world who should avoid the conversation about electoral irregularities, it's the Nevis Reformation Party. Because they hold the distinction of being the only party in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis to have had an election declared null and void. Null and void for electoral fraud committed by them. And they now lead in March and saying how holy they are and how righteous they are 
and trying to fool who they can fool. I wasn't here. But when I turn on the internet and I see in front of the march, it's Hensley Daniel. I say, oh my goodness gracious. Hensley clearly thought they were marching about something else. Because I don't believe if Hensley knew they were talking about electoral irregularities, he would have come out. And if I were Janice, I would have said, Hensley, stop home for this one. This is not for you. Because Hensley was declared not on void by a court of law. And that was upheld by the court of appeal, pushing us back to an election, which finally restored some integrity to the electoral process. At the next side, are you gonna try and lose? At the next side, are you gonna try and lose? So I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, and Hamilton to say that when the election comes, whenever it comes, I want you to go out in your numbers and return the Honorable Spencer Brand to the Nevis Island Assembly. You know. They got together with Timmy from Sinkits. Used to call himself the top dog. Now they say he's the Chihuahua. But they got together with him and fabricated some story about Spencer. But you know what I like about Spencer? I like when I go to church and he starts to conduct the choir. I like the fact that he has his family. And that he has a life that he can present to all of us as somebody to be emulated. And no matter what they say or what they do, if you have lived a good life, people know you. And that's what I say. We don't need to talk about them because people know them too. So when they came with the attacks on Spencer, it didn't work. When Timmy sent them the piece of paper and tell them talk about this, it did not work. And I would remind you that in the last election on August 5th, that the good people of St. Paul's voted overwhelmingly for the Concerned Citizens Movement. You know, I feel very good about St. Paul's. You know why? Because when Spencer Brand ran in 2017, he won St. Paul's by 11 votes. 11. When we ran in the federal election in 2020, we won St. Paul's, I believe it was by 86 votes. And when we ran again, just 18 months later in 2022, we won St. Paul's by 100 plus votes. It means that St. Paul's is moving in the right direction. The people of St. Paul's have seen progress. They have a representative who cares about them. A representative who has demonstrated his commitment to the development and the advancement of this great parish and constituency. Somebody who has provided for you jobs, training, housing, roads, drainage, infrastructure, he has provided it all. That is why I believe, I am convinced, I am convicted that the Honorable Spencer Brand will be returned on election day. So if Spencer is going to win in one, I'm asking the people of St. John's who have been with me from the moment I entered politics until now, to stick with me and return Mark Brantley number two. In number three, I don't believe there's any doubt that it will be Eric Evelyn again in number three. In number four, it is Jeffers to work. They used to say he's the hardest working minister, but it looked like Spencer wanted to rival him now. But the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, I say, when I want something done, let Alexis do it. 
He has demonstrated his commitment to the people of St. James. And I know on election day number four, it will be the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. And in number five, number five, number five, in the great parish of St. Thomas's, you see how St. Thomas turn up? You all see how St. Thomas's turn up? It used to be that when we have elections, they say, oh, St. Thomas is safe. Safe where? When I could hear now the Lord NRP representative, the woman who is now in St. Thomas's, you know what she said? We will defend St. Thomas's at all costs. I said to myself, in all my years, I never thought I would hear the NRP say those words. That they will have to defend St. Thomas's at all costs. Well, St. Thomas's, let me tell you, it is time for you to turn blue. And we have brought a candidate to you who can make a difference, who loves people, and who will represent you well in the new cabinet. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we are going to keep Nevis blue. Because I count from one to five, I run out of fingers, and it's all CCM. All the concerned citizens' movement. And I encourage you to go out and do what you need to do on election day. We have a record that we're running on. We have plans and programs that we will be unveiling as we go through this campaign. And I'm inviting you to support the candidates of the Concerned Citizens Movement. Before I leave the stage, however, this crowd that is here and those online, let me ask you, CCM, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready. We will be ringing the bell. And when the bell is rung and the date is set, I'm asking you to go out and support overwhelmingly the Concerned Citizens Movement. Hamilton, thank you for having us. Good night and God bless you.